Every day there are endless articles coming out talking about the housing market. I mean, you've seen them. Housing prices could plunge 20%. Housing market in a flux. Here's why it may take a while for the housing inflation to cool off. First time home buyers face brutal housing markets. And look at this one. No one wants to catch a falling knife. You could spend almost every waking moment reading all of the opinions out there and it can be quite overwhelming. Yo, I'm going to break down all the information out there and then I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen in the future. And that way you don't have to dive into all this information yourself. Now here's my little disclaimer on this video. I don't have a crystal ball and neither does anyone else. Market conditions can change in an instant. I mean, we have pandemics, war, and a bunch of other things that can make everything change in a heartbeat. So with that little disclosure out of the way, let's talk. I'm sure you have noticed that the housing market has slowed down rapidly. Con Contract cancellations are on the rise and mortgage applications are lower than they have been since the Great Recession, meaning the buyers are sitting on the fence. And likely you already know why. We have ultra high prices compared to two years ago. And this was created by low interest rates. And these low interest rates ultimately created inflation. And to combat inflation, they had to rise interest rates. So now we have high prices, high interest rates, and high inflation. This is making buyers feel a little uneasy about moving forward. And can you blame them? And many of these buyers, they don't necessarily have to buy right now as much as they want to. They don't have to. So they're kind of waiting and seeing what's going to happen. Are the prices going to go down? Is there going to be a crash? Are the rates going to go down? And oftentimes, they're looking at homes that they were interested a year ago just simply slip out of their comfort zone maybe in terms of price in general or because their monthly payments have increased so much due to the rate hikes now the reason why a buyer's budget is affected by inflation is more than one way well it's actually two ways but the first way is the obvious way is that the cost of borrowing becomes more expensive and the second way is that it drives down the income of the average working family in america because people are spending less money we have to realize that when people are spending less money people are making less money one person's expenditure is the other person's profit and when one goes down the other one goes down with it now if we combine this with what we're seeing in the news over and over again the fears of a recession or a crash or even the concern that the rates are at an all-time high and probably gonna come down later can you really blame buyers for sitting on the fence and just seeing what happens I mean, I can't. And you know what? If you take a look at this, the National Association of Realtors senior economist, Nadia Evangelou, I hope I said that right, said that buyers are better suited waiting until at least 2024. Now, even with this, we have to look at all of the negative headlines and all the clickbaity videos out there talking about doom or gloom and this is gonna be worse than the Great Recession of 2008, 2009. But we are nowhere near that in terms of a market correction. Back then, what drove the decline was mostly a runaway situation caused by predatory lending practices. It was insanely easy to apply and obtain a mortgage and just about everyone did, including many people who didn't have any business getting one in the first place. And basically what happened then in my best cliff note explanation for this video is that the market got flooded with buyers. And as demand rose, so did the prices of homes and people who bought homes quickly saw their equity bill. And many of these loans were adjustable rate mortgages. So when the rates and payments increased, they got into trouble. And further, these financially unsavvy homeowners didn't reinvest their equity wisely instead many of them pulled it out they bought things like jet skis and vacations and other depreciating liabilities so people couldn't pay their mortgages and the party ended and we had an influx of short sales and foreclosures and these sellers they couldn't afford to sell because they had no equity as they spent it all and buyers didn't have any demand for these properties and many homes sat empty and run down driving down the value basically my whole business from 2009 to 2011 were listing short sales for sellers and showing foreclosures to my buyers and that looked nothing like what it looks like now if you look at this graph right here this represents the mortgage foreclosure filings and you can see that we're at an all-time low as of last year to be crystal clear and honest with you it has risen to almost pre-pandemic numbers but even then if you look at it it's way lower than it was in 2007 and even all the way up to 2016 it would take something extraordinary to two to four x the levels as it is now as a matter of fact take a look at what lawrence young with a national association of realtors said he made a really good point he said distressed property sales are almost non-existent at just two percent and nowhere near to 30 percent mark seen during the housing crash. The reason why it's so low is because it's much harder to obtain a mortgage now than it did before. And most of them are fixed mortgages that don't adjust. With these buyers being more scrutinized than before, and a lot for your mortgages that fluctuate, you have a much stronger crop of buyers. And even further, we learned our lesson from back then. Homeowners didn't spend their equity on liabilities like before. So now basically they can afford and have the ability to sell. If sellers get into trouble now, they have options and more capabilities to get out. So no, the chances of us having a foreclosure problem like we had before is extremely unlikely. And you might say, okay, that's great. 
But what about now? What about our future at the moment? What can you and what can I expect? As I mentioned before, there's no shortage of people with your opinions who are writing articles and doing YouTube videos on this subject. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to dive into the real information from the real analysts and economists and share with you their perspective because this is what they focus on day in and day out. And truthfully, they're a lot smarter than me. So if you take a look at this graph here, you can see what these economists are predicting for 2023. And you can see that half of them believe that the prices are actually going to increase all the way from 0.7% to 2.6. And Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae have a slight depreciation, 0.2 negative and negative 1.5%. And only Zellman has a prediction of more than 5% of a decrease. Lawrence Young with the National Association of Realtors predicts that it's going to be 1.2% of the national average will increase in 2023. But here's the thing. He thinks in 2024, it's going to be 10%. So let's say we want to be a negative Nancy and focus on the most negative number on there. Negative 5.1% depreciation according to Zellman. But if we apply this to the housing prices since 2000, as you see this chart here, we can see that it's really not that big of a deal because up to pre-pandemic, the rising of home prices has been quite predictable and steady. But since the pandemic, it has gone up approximately about 21%. So if we adjust, if you will, by 5% below that, we are still above the trend lines. So this by far means that we're not in a market crash. It's more of a like a recalibration, if you will. So that's what the experts are saying. And we can see that it's nowhere reflecting what we're seeing over and over again in the news. And we got to ask ourselves why. Why isn't it as bad as what everyone fears it could be? And there's a couple of reasons why, and we're going to talk about a few of them in the video. First one is inventory. Simply put, there just aren't enough homes to house all the Americans that are looking for homes. As Mike Kinsella said, he's the CEO of Up for Growth. We're seeing a shortage or housing under production in all corners of the United States. America's fallen 3.8 million homes short of meeting our housing needs. And as of November 6th, homes that are listed on the market for sale are down 17.5% compared to the same time as last year. And further, builders aren't helping that much because they have pulled back on starting new construction homes. So basically, there still is an urgent need for people to own homes, and that's going to keep home prices relatively stable. And the second one here is what's called M2 money supply, and it's rarely even discussed and often overlooked, which I don't really know why. And let me explain what M2 money supply is. It is liquid cash. It's currently available and ready to spend. And a little side note, if you see that spike in 2020, that's because of the stimulus checks. A lot of people received income from the government. So that spiked up M2 money supply. People typically don't like their money just sitting in an account earning zero, like a checking or savings account. And my personal prediction is when this fog of uncertainty lifts, people are going to want to park their money somewhere. And when they see the predictions of the housing market and this new normal is, well, the new normal of the housing market, investors and people with cash are going to be parking their money inside of real estate again. And number three is rising rent prices. If you take a look at this graph here, you can see that rent prices have skyrocketed. And oftentimes, it's more expensive to pay rent than it is to pay a mortgage. People typically don't like to throw their money away on rent. So if they can get a down payment together and put it towards a mortgage instead, I expect that much like the investors mentioned in number two, is that when this fog of uncertainty lifts, that a lot of these renters are going to get off the fence themselves and buy themselves a new home. And now we have number four, which I may be shooting myself in the foot on this one because I am being cautiously optimistic. However, it's not just me saying what I'm about to say, and is that interest rates might have peaked. Now, we know interest rates doubled, and even more so in some areas, over a short few couple of months. But as of right now, as of today, as I'm recording this, the rates are at the lowest it's been in the last 45 days. And some economists that I read about today are suggesting that our peak just occurred, and that the interest rates are going to steadily decline over the next 13 months. A B, it's not going to be in a straight line, and it's not going to be nearly as fast as they rose, but it's still going to decline. And with declining rates, we're hoping that a lot of these buyers will get off the fence again and make a purchase. Now, there's so much more that goes into it, but I think you get the point and we'll elaborate on future videos. But for this one, let's summarize what to do if you're a buyer or seller. And the first one, we're going to talk about buyers. This actually pains me to say, because I'm a real estate agent who feeds my family on selling homes. I'm not a YouTuber looking to get YouTube rich or getting clicks and views. And I have built my business on honesty, and integrity, and I plan to do so going forward. So me telling you and my buyers this might go against 
income for my family. But I'm going to be honest with you here. If I were looking to buy a house or someone came to me for advice, I would say, you know what? The data suggests that the rates are going to be relatively high, although they're going to decrease modestly over the next year. So the rates are going to be relatively high all the way through 2023. And home prices are not going to climb that much at all. If they do at all, there's some people who think they're going to decline. So if you look at the data, it just doesn't make sense to go and buy a house right away and rush off to do it unless you absolutely need a place to stay or, or home to buy. And that's a different conversation. With sellers, my advice for you is this. You have to look at this from a buyer's perspective. Right now, there's so much uncertainty for them and they're not really sure if they should be making a move. And with days on market increasing and prices with the potential of dropping or if they increase, it's gonna be a modest increase. It doesn't really make sense to try to maximize your profit. You have to look at it like an investor. And how investors look at selling real estate is they try to list it slightly below market value. And there's a good strategy there. For example, if we have a strategy of having one of the nicer homes that are available and we're 2% below what market value is on paper, then we are gonna create a genuine interest, a strong interest from more buyers than any of our competition. And the result of that could very likely be that all this interest that we drummed up could create a possible multiple offer situation and we could get higher than what your house is worth one thing i do want to note that every home and every situation every town is different so talk to your real estate agent and make sure you get a good one google them and look them up and make sure they know what they're doing before you move forward with that and also we also have to realize that the price that you thought you could have made six months ago is no longer there you can't sit here and say that you lost all this money, as I've heard so many times before. That money never existed. That was money that was in your mind. That You never earned it. It was never there. So you didn't lose anything. So if you really are serious about selling your house, I advise you to be one of the nicer homes available and being about 2% lower than the market value of our competition. And with that, my name is Chris Cusimano. I hope you found this video informative and hope maybe even entertaining. You can hopefully you will subscribe to see more of this stuff. And you also, I have my family YouTube channel, as I said before, at us Cusimano. Check that out. US comma, my last name, Cusimano. And hopefully you'll subscribe to that. So until the next time, my friends, I'll see you around.